So did you know that your SSH server gets attacked maybe millions of times a day? That is true and in this video we're going to see how to defend against those attacks. So if you want to learn more about this, stick with me. Hello what's up guys, Medium Guy here and welcome to another video on my channel in which I'm going to show you how to defend against the millions of attacks that your servers get on the internet day by day. So basically the servers that are exposed on the internet and actually has a public IP address can be found by the attackers and actually by utilizing some tools or some scripts that they create themselves they can actually attack and guess your correct username and password and get inside your servers and like maybe they can encrypt all your files and data in it and actually ask you for money in order to decrypt those files. So that's the last thing you want to happen to you. So in order to learn one way to defend against those attacks, let's get down to work. So right before I start this video, I wanted to mention my video about brute forcing your SSH servers in which you can actually learn how to create a brute force attack from zero and actually you can test it on your infrastructure or the servers that you have exposed on the internet level. So in order to show you how exactly this will work, right over here I've got a total overview of a tool that is called Cori and actually it is a implementation of a concept that is called Honeypot that is actually a trap for the attacker that he thinks he has made a successful connection to the SSH server but actually it is a honeypot and all the file system and every other thing is a made up thing and actually he won't be able to harm your real data. So actually I'm going to implement this in docker environment as a docker container and actually by doing that I add another level of security so basically a docker container is a totally isolated process that runs in our server and its file system and processes and everything is isolated within that container and actually it won't by any chance harm our real data that is located in our servers. So basically as we can see over here this is the client most of the times is a bot that is making a brute force attack to our servers so actually it has a username and a list of passwords and somehow it has our SSH server's IP address so basically it is trying to make a SSH connection on port 22 which is the default port that the SSH server most of the times will be listening on. So basically by putting Kauri on the exact same port that is actually acting as a SSH server, the attacker will actually be redirected inside the honeypot that we put over here and actually we can monitor and see through the logs what kind of tasks he runs in our honeypot. So the point is that our SSH server is running on another port that is actually a random port and not a commonly used port for the SSH server. So the attacker will actually have to go through another process to find out that our SSH server is listening on another port. So right now that we have a total overview of how we're going to implement the honeypot, I'll move to the terminal and I'll hit ls. And right over here I've got a docker compose file so if I nano this docker compose file you can see that I'm using the official Cori image that has some volumes mounted inside it and a port map to inside the container which normally will have to set to 22 in order to make the attacker think that he has been actually made a successful attack to our server. So for the demonstration purposes and because I'm running my SSH server on the default port, I'm just going to expose this honeypot service on port 2222. So right over here on the volume section, we've got some files and directories mapped to inside the container which will actually be utilized by the Kauri inside the container and the log files and the files that the attacker created will be actually persisted so later we can check 
what kind of crap has been running on our servers. So as we can see on the last volume, we map a modd file to inside the container. So basically this stands for the message of the day. So basically it is a banner that we set to our SSH servers. So on the initial login, we get that banner and actually it is a total description of what the purpose of that SSH server is. So like for example, I'm going to nano the modd file and I'll pass super secret server as the value. So basically you can put whatever inside this and it will be shown as a banner when the attacker actually logs in. So actually it is recommended to use a real world example so that actually you can make the attacker to think that he has made a successful connection to a real server. So right now I'm just gonna create the other volumes that I've mapped inside the container and right now I'm ready to actually spin up my honeypot server. So if I say docker compose op-d to run it in detached mode and actually free up my terminal session. So if I say docker compose logs-f and dash dash tail 100 to grab the latest 100 lines and dash f to follow the logs and if I hit enter for some reason I can see some permission error and actually the honeypot service might not be able to act correctly and if I hit ctrl c I'm just gonna say ch mod I'll put 777 and I'll put dash r to make the modification changes recursively to all the files inside the directories that are cowrie and session logs and user files so I'll hit enter and if I hit ls you can see that they are turned into green and if I hit ls-la you can see that the modification has been successfully applied to my given directory so if I say docker compose down and docker compose up dash d again and I'll try to look for the logs of the container and this time I can see that it is actually working correctly and listening on the defined port. So I'll hit Ctrl C to exit out of the logs and in a real world example that you want to run this on the port 22 and actually run your SSH server on another port, you can actually make the changes on the slash etc ssh sshd-conf and look for the port section that you can see over here which is by default 22 so in order to change this you will have to actually uncomment this line and put some random number over here so i'm just going to exit out of this nano because this is just for demonstration purposes and i'm actually not changing my ssh server's port so after you change this configuration file just make sure you restart the ssh server so right now my honeypot service is actually up and running and if I say docker compose ps I'll be actually seeing the container that has been created and the exact port that I defined on the docker compose file is mapped successfully to inside the container. So as a client I'll move to another terminal and if I say ssh root and I'll pass in my server's IP address and I'll pass the port to be 2222. I'll hit enter and actually because I have the fingerprint of my previously running honeypot service on this exact server by running this command over here I'm just removing the fingerprint and if I actually try to connect to the SSH server again I'll hit enter. It will ask to add the fingerprint of the server. I'll hit yes and it is actually asking for a password. I can put any password and hit enter and actually you can see that I am inside the server and the content of the modd file that we mounted to inside the container is being shown over here. So right now I'm inside the server. If I hit ls I can do things that I would normally do on a server. I'll hit pwd I'll move to the slash, I'll hit ls, you can see that I've got a fake file system which is actually looking like a valid file system. So like for example I'll go to home and you can see that there is actually a user inside this 
I'll hit enter and I'll actually try to create files and if I hit ls you can see that my file has been created and any other stuff that an attacker would actually try to do on this honeypot server. So I'll hit exit to get out of the honeypot server and if I go back to the server right over here I'll hit ls go inside the cowrie directory I'll hit ls again and if I hit nano cowrie.json over here you can see all the logs that have been created for the session that I made to the honeypot server. So like for example you can see that I've actually run the commands ls, pwd, I made a cd to the root directory, created some stuff and I hit exit and any other stuff that actually I can find the logs right over here. So one other important thing that you can find over here is the session connection source IP address that you can see because I've connected locally on a local network I'm actually seeing my local IP address. So normally this will be the IP address of the client or the attacker that is actually creating the connection to this honeypot service. So I'll exit this file and I'll move to the session logs and you can see that there is a file over here and if I try to cat this file this is actually a file that you can import to other tools to actually look through all the logs that have been created because in a real world example there will actually be a lot of logs and it will actually be a difficult task to find what you're looking for among these log files. So if I move to the documentation over here on the official documentation that you can find on the github repository for this tool there is actually a section that you can see how to send the log files to tools like Elasticsearch to MySQL and Splunk and Azure Sentinel and things like that that you might need for your use case. So that's all I have for this video and I hope you learned something new in this one. So lastly, don't forget to give a visit to my channel where you can find other videos about other cool technologies. And if you found the content useful, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel which will motivate me to actually create more free contents like this. So with that, that's all for this video and I hope to see you in the next videos.